In this chapter, we will talk about a group of chemical jasper that is characterized by a brick-shattered structure. The brick-shattered jasper. Mm, in our classification of jasper, based on the precursor, chemical jasper are the group where um, the jasper results from direct precipitation from solution. The other group are the transformation or of uh, organogenic opal, of volcanic glass, or mm, fossil material like wood or bone. Uh, chemical jasper, mm, as we see before, can be subdivided in few groups. The more important is uh, the laminated jasper, that is the generic group. And uh, we make also two secondary group uh, basing on some secondary phenomena that are the formation of uh, orbs and the formation of breccia. Another group is Jasper Gate, that is a transition group between Jasper and Dagat. Okay, uh, virtually mm, every kind of Jasper can be brecciated. Uh, we see abyssal Jasper, like the Tabu Tabu from South Africa, this is a kind of mukite uh, that is a radiolite, and there are geolithic jasper, also thunder egg, silicified wood, petrified wood can be brisetted. And the brisetted chemical jasper, mm, but this is the real brisetted group because of uh, an, uh, a special uh, origin. So it is possible that many of them have a similar origin, but we study in more deep, more deeply, we study this group, chemical jasper with brecciation. All these jasper uh, show the the cement of the breccia, the filling of the space that is made of chalcedony or sometimes microcrystalline quartz. So not jasper, but chalcedony. So mm, they uh, mm, suggest that there is a a change in the chemistry. So uh, uh, clearly, the jasper mm, formed first. Then there is a change in chemistry, the process of brecciation, and the, uh, the the last formed material is considered. Only two groups of jasper have filling with jasper. Uh, as we see, massive jasper. <laughs> Uh, are characterized by a typical fracture part partner. So this pattern is uh, uh, something diagnostic of this kind of jasper. It is typical. So without this fracturing pattern, we have no massive jasper. Mm <coughs> in most of this massive jasper, there is no space in the fracture, so there is not a uh, new jasper filling the fracture, uh, but uh, uh if it if it is is jasper, there is never calcedony. Another group is uh, some specimen of chemical orb jasper that have a, a vertical fracture due to load, and this fracture, as we see in, in the last chapter, uh, are open. So there is a new space that has been filled by jasper. And we suggest that this space is due to uh, dissolution of jasper. So these two cases uh, show a nearly fracturing. So when the fracturing occurred, uh, the jasper was uh, yet in a, in a solution where it was stable and uh, con was continuing to be formed. Okay. This is to abyssal jasper. Mm. This is from South Africa. This is a red laminated jasper. And this is um, from Australia. Uh, the jasper is broken when it was already hard. And this is uh, evident because mm, the jasper was folded and broken after the folding. And uh, these black uh, beds was uh, um, just black before the fracturing and, and the movement of cluster uh, each other respect to one respect to the other is uh, little 
So um, the the this, the piece of jasper remain more or less in in the original place. Okay, uh, we start uh, with the uh, um, jasper. And so we want to understand what kind of fracture exists. Until now, we found two uh, fracture system, uh, two fra fracture pattern. So there was a V-shaped desiccation fracture in the in the chemical jasper and the vertical fracture due by load, also in, in chemical jasper. So this pattern. Uh, v shaped uh, is a loss of volume because the same as happened in mud from the free surface there is a loss of water that is more rapid up, upwards and the fracture uh, start from from the top of the bed and go inside so uh, the base of the bed is uh, have a loss of volume more um, more slow and can mm, be uh, re uh, replaced by other component but the more faster and more long desiccation on the top uh, all the loss of water uh, uh, cause a loss of a loss of, of volume so typically when it started the 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 fracture continue to develop and become bigger and bigger. In the case of fracture by load, the, because there is pressure, there is no space, open space, there is no loss of volume, and the fracture are more or less parallel to each other. So we see just few cases where uh, the solution is responsible for open, open space. So in, in this case, we suggest that probably the fracture I are due by uh, the solution. So try to to look better. Uh, we see that clusters stay in place. So more or less, there is very few movement of the the piece with almost no rotation. And the fracture are parallel or or perpendicular to lamination. So. Uh, <coughs> lamination is a surface of um, uh, weakness so it's more uh, easy for the water to penetrate in, in a surface between two lamina but also the vertical fracture can be uh, uh, due to uh, load the, the same as in chemical jasper so the two systems are consistent with penetration of water in um, uh, alignment with in in fracture or in plane bedding that are uh, that was just present in in the jasper um, this uh, this deposit uh, that are formed uh, in a missile plane but are found in in surface in continent are uh, embedded inside a long sequence of deposit so uh, they are always subject to load so it is impossible to lift the cluster for example this piece um, for a make this void cannot be pushed up uh, because gravity and load uh, make it this make it impossible and also it is impossible to have desiccation fracture because um, the, the 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 space that has that can be produced by the loss of volume uh, must be uh, closed by the pressure. So, um, what what is the cause of the space where the calcedony um, enter? So we suggest that this solution is and the dissolution act in we weakness plane the lamination and the fracture by load and mm, the fact that always the the filling is calcedony suggests 
mm, give us the suspect that the calcedony, the calcedony itself is the responsible for the dissolution of the jasper. So we are in a, a, a chemical ambient where jasper is instable and uh, a small dissolution of the jasper produce a precipitation of calcedony. So uh, in different kind of nodule, we can have a different uh, pattern of fracturation. Um, in a septaria, that is a typical concretion, uh, is a concretion made by mud, uh, hardening mud, uh, we choose a, a septaria uh, that is made of silica, is uh, typical from Romania, and for a, uh, something comparable to our Jasper. So the fracturing septaria are formed by expulsion of water um, from mm, the nodule, still plastic, in the form of mud. The hardening starts from outside and go inside. And we know this because there is not loss of volume uh, in, the in the outer surface because <coughs> Here it starts the hardening. Inside there is a muddy material that uh, sl more slowly lost water and lost volume. So uh, they open uh, some fractures. These fractures are usually filled in, in Cetaria, filled by calcite, here by quartz. So mm, hardening from outside to inside. In this jasper, the fracture pattern is more similar to opal. Uh, we see a difference, uh, the difference with uh, septaria is that the fracture are many and more ab abundant and more, uh, more tiny and more one near the other. But uh, uh, the, the, the mecha mechanism of hardening is the same. The hardening starts from outside and make some mm, V-shaped fracture of loss of volume uh, going inside. So uh, there is no fracture on, on the edge of the, on the skin of the circle of, of the orbs, but the fracture start from inside to outside. So it's the same like in septaria. So hardening from outside the circle to inside. Just in some case, we can have in, in very very small nodule we can have fractured from the outer surface and this is probably due, uh, probably possible when the nodule was mm, hardened for, for, uh, for complete so, so the, there, is, there was no uh, muddy uh, center so the septaria style of fracture is possible in Jasper but is not uh, so common so it's more rare and uh, localized to some part of the of the jasper and this uh, this means that um, the the mechanic is not different the, the physics of loss of volume in jasper is not different than in septaria because we can have the same pattern in septaria in, in jasper but uh, is not the more common so we can have this pattern but the more common is more typical to opal with tin fracture. And this is the, the typical pattern of uh, fracture of orbs mm, chemical jasper and we see the, the hardening of the nodule uh, uh, of the orbs is from outside to inside and as we see in the other chapter the first orbs hardened first then the second, then again, again. So, hardening of the nodule is, is from inside to outside, but hardening of the orbs is from outside to inside. So also, we can have um, this is uh, imperial jasper from Mexico, is a deposit that usually have uh, normal orbs without crack, but just in one, one area there is all cracked center, and this nodule is at the limit, at the boundary between the two mm, the way of uh, hardening the nodule 
that is uh, showing uh, the, the two, two different uh, series of orbs, one with crack and a second one without crack. So uh, there is a, a change in the in the desiccation pattern. So now mm, we we can see a typical imperial jasper nodule with these orbs with crack that are more uh, ardened first in the outer edge and the crack going from the inside to the outside and we, we can f we, we found a, a similar nodule in a jasper from the South California and we can see that uh, the dissolution is uh, more deep in this specimen and more chalcedony in, in this case I think is microcrystalline quartz is filling the, the space opened by the dissolution but uh, uh, the shape uh, of the uh, dissolved orbs is easy to recognize so probably this nodule was a fully orbed nodule that are being fractured and <coughs> dissolved. So this is the full nodule. We can see that this uh, full round nodule with uh, orb uh, orb pattern and the all the orbs are uh, fractured and dissolved. This is uh, another. Uh, specimen from the same location and we suggest that we see that probably uh, it was also orbed with uh, more septaria fracture uh, at the beginning and then all the circle from uh, outward. Uh, another uh, material from Southern California is chapinite and here is quite more difficult to recognize the orbit structure but in some piece where you can find the, the wall geometry of the of the nodule you can see some uh, orbit structure and but more deep with more chalcedony than in the other sample this is a, another uh, nodule from same deposit y we can see that was a partial filled nodule with this the base the, the free surface so there was circle inside mm, and the circle the orbs are broken and the the filling is by calcedon so this is mm, a non fractured uh, material that was a kind of laminated material in this case there are no orbs so there are the process of fracturation are, are, are not started but in, in, the other, in the other specimen, we have two orbit air area with fracturing and also uh, the transition to calcitonin is so strong that, that we have some moss in the middle. Right, there is a material from Italy called Diaspro Fiorito, that is a flower jasper, very popular in the 16th century for the production of uh, object of uh, decorative object and it uh, is a, a nodular jasper but uh, the coalitions uh, of nodule make the nodule very wide and uh, often uh, like bed so very long and it's possible to cut um, thick uh, slab like this that is more than four meter uh, cutting horizontal um, the bed so the I, in, in bigger piece we cannot recognize the shape of like septaria tile with the orbs and the circle so we we see mostly a brecciate jasper with a big amount of uh, chalcedony another bed from the same deposit <coughs> um, produce yellow jasper and uh, um, this yellow jasper in small specimen a, a typical septaria uh, fracture system but very small, have the fracture from, from the outside. 
in bigger piece or more uh, deeply dissolved. Um, chalcedony is more abundant and the fracture system is more complex. Uh, so we, we can see some alignment, but um, it's more complicated to reconstruct, to reconstruct the, the possible orbit origin or its uh, lamination. Uh, we can see in detail the uh, appearance of the of the fragment of jasper and uh, we can see that in some case uh, there is clearly a piece of jasper de delimited from each other by chalcedony transparent chalcedony but some fractures are very teeny very teeny that enter inside the jasper and broke it in very very small uh, fragment but in more deeply uh, uh, alterated uh, specimen, we can see that the jasper that is this yellow area in is more altered in into a, a mossy material like this more dark area. So the fragment that, that was firstly delimited by chalcedony, mm, the chalcedony start to enter inside. So just few small area or real jasper remain and most of material is a kind of mossy material that uh, if you see in micro detail is mm, embedded in chalcedony also with yellow color but there is a teeny, teeny small uh, uh, piece of chalcedony in the porosity of the jasper so this is a kind of moss and in this mm, jasper actually is all a mossy material and is quite difficult to distinguish from uh, a moss agate and uh, a final product uh, this is a specimen from uh, another uh, deposit is not from from Sicily but is something that mm, at the first eye you can mm, define as a moss agate but if you look uh, at at the micro scale, uh, you can see that there is uh, some clusters remain with shape of uh, fragment of jasper with some remain of the jasper structure uh, in, the, in the center. So the final stage uh, of a, of a brichetted chemical jasper can be a, a kind of moss agate. So the jasper is quite finished, is dyed. This is a, another jasper from the United States, very famous, uh, Stone Canyon from California. Uh, there is a nice pattern of fragmentation, and uh, as uh, mm, uh, the Sicilian material, there is a, a lot of chalcedony or microcrystalline quartz that can be more than 70 percent. So uh, this is a kind of just a gate and uh, is uh, only f f only 30 percent is Jasper so we are very far from the original material in in some area the Jasper have this strange structure with circular fracture something like this but also we can see there is a distinction between the more real Jasper area and uh, a material that is more like moss. In the Stony Creek area, the, the nodules are um, more uh, deeply uh, transformed into chalcedony, and the uh, mossy material is more abundant. In small nodule, we see that uh, septaria fracture pattern is also recognizable, but most of the material show a lot of moss inside the same as in the Sicilian material here we can see uh, <coughs> just per fragment then the fragmentation can be very deep uh, until we, we can see uh, a mossy fabric of the, of the material this is uh, another Jasper from Burrow Creek, Arizona 
also from Boro Creek with more color. Uh, and this is one specimen where it's possible to see the original shape in pattern filled uh, nodule. And uh, we see that uh, the fragmentation of the jasper is associated to uh, a slump, a movement, a secondary movement of the, of the clust. So the material uh, was not completely fragile to be crushed, and there is some plastic behavior that can suggest this uh, folding of the some piece of jasper. This is another famous material, the stephonite. It's, uh, nice to mm, to see the the, the isle of jasper the, the the clust of jasper are characterized by teeny teeny fracture all over around going until the inside of the, the piece is in this also we can see the fracture enter the piece and make mm, broken more deeply in, in more teeny piece the material this is uh, the sangria jasper this is a, a deposit uh, associated to crazy lace agate and uh, it's possible to see a, a laminated jasper stratified jasper with mm, some remain of the stratification but uh, uh, the the chalcedony is so deeply entered inside that make a separate bed also with banding this is another material from another location where it's possible to recognize that the uh, broken clasts have a shape uh, that uh, remember like bird's eye rolite but uh, where the the eyes are broken uh, as a brecciated jasper so it's probably uh, an alterated and brecciated uh, rhyolitic jasper and this uh, is a typical brecciate jasper from Wyoming, uh, where most of the fracture come from outside. But we, we can see that all the fracture are um, mm, appear without any movement of the fragment. So all the fragments stay in this place. This also from Wyoming is a, a kind of rock called often agate because uh, the remain of jasper are very few but it's qua uh, uh, quite easy to recognize a, a brecciated jasper in some area so the process of alteration is very very intense a, a group of uh, of jasper with evident dissolution uh, and fracturing is uh, uh, characterized uh, some laminated jasper where the lamination has been uh, fractured and uh, intensely uh, permeated by chalcedony. Uh, in this case, the baskinite from, from Nevada, it's possible to see that mm, almost any lamina has been interbedded by a thin white layer of chalcedony. And this process is possible at the origin of an our famous material, the awardite, that is uh, a very strange jasper with amazing color and where the uh, original lamination also is possible to to see wi with uh, perpendicular uh, line that are probably a fracture of, uh, of load or other kinds of alignment it's quite uh, pervasive the alteration so it's difficult to understand what was exactly but there is trace of the original uh, lamination. Another uh, famous uh, jasper of this kind is Lavic seeding from Southern California that also show a, a kind of uh, laminate bed that were uh, are undisturbed uh, result like this, so a nice uh, laminated chemical jasper, but uh, uh, in most of the sample uh, there is a quite moss appearance of, of the, the brecciate jasper. And dissolution plus fracturing is possible also in petrified wood. Uh, we see that uh, 
the pattern is the same that we see in laminated Brechat Jasper, but uh, mm, the, the calcedony uh, do not enter uh, between lamina, but between uh, wood ring. This is the alignment of the ring of the wood, and the calcedony enter inside. So, th because also the wood ring is a surface of more high porosity. This is another mm, wood from Crooked River in Oregon, and in this case, there is some remain of the wood ring, but uh, this is called a limb cast because the trace of the wood are very, very poor and very difficult to to understand. So um, uh, we can reconstruct the genesis of a of a brachette jasper. Uh, from a laminated brachette jasper in this way, so this is a normal jasper with uh, joint of major porosity that are the joint between laminas and the joint uh, uh, represented by fractures. So mm, the the water, the, s the solution enter in this joint and dissolve jasper and deposit uh, uh, calcedony. So this is. Uh, process, uh, chemical process, it's not physical. So uh, every people that have cut it and worked with Jasper know that it's quite impossible to physically destroy uh, a, a Jasper, also with a big hammer. You can broke a Jasper but not crush it. So uh, if you find a Jasper that have mm, so teeny uh, clasped inside, uh, the chemical process is the only explanation. So if you, ana if you analyze the, the fracture, we see that uh, the fracture have a fractal uh, propagation. Uh, we see mm, bigger fracture that are crossed from with smaller fracture and we, we can call first uh, and second, but there is a third grade of fracture and then again smaller and smaller. So this is mm, the way as a phenomenon propagate, as the uh, a tree growing tree, that every branch is smaller and smaller and smaller. So this means that mm, the crushing is not one phenomenon uh, that appear altogether, but is a, a propagating phenomenon. So this, uh, this is a kind of explanation of mm, that the, this fracture arrive first, then arrive the second one, but this continue to grow, and then when this arrive uh, for third, this continue to grow and this continue to grow. So uh, this fracture will be never big as the first one. But why the clasp uh, keep uh, sharp edge? Uh, this edge like this are always very sharp. And um, for example, if we put uh, ice in water, ice cube in, in water, they become rounded. So we imagine that the solution provoke a uh, round uh, clust. So for, for, um, for explaining this, mm, this difference, we have to imagine a different process. So the, the process is like this one, that there is a this is a solid jasper, there is a fracture that uh, drains the solution, so the, the fracture exists in the rock and the solution enters inside and the solution provokes the alkali silica reaction that makes the jasper more softer. And um, uh, if appear uh, in, in a jasper in, in its ambient, in the good uh, pH condition for the jasper, and when is the in the dry season, when when the the water uh, leave the jasper, uh, more uh, jasper uh, crystallize inside, and you cannot see any structure. But if the 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 jasper uh, is found in a, a different pH condition, so in a condition of in of stability of chalcedony, when uh, when, when uh, the dry season arrives, uh, don't crystallize uh, 
don't precipitate precipitate jasper but precipitate calcedon so the the fracture uh, softened uh, by alkali silica reaction is replaced by calcedon so in the next uh, wet season the next rainy season the alkali silica reaction expand and make more fracture that uh, will be replaced by new calcedon so the fracture edge are uh, kept sharp because uh, the fracture is never empty so there is not uh, losing of material but uh, uh, every time mm, the fracture propagate inside the jasper uh, some solid uh, calcedony uh, is precipitated inside so uh, the whole process take place uh, on the con contact surface between sur jasper and chalcedony so uh, this mm, fracture filling continue to, to grow inside the jasper in a fractal way but never uh, there is a void fracture and there is no possibility to uh, for the clust to fall down and uh, precipitate so in this way we, you can have an horizontal fracture that uh, virtually look like uh, suspend uh, support the weight of the clust above there is no support and there is not pushing up of the fracture just the fracture is uh, the, the clust is formed here and never moves so this uh, this dynamic uh, remember the concrete cancer that is uh, a problem, uh, a phenomenon uh, that uh, uh, occur in concrete uh, when the, there is uh, an alkali uh, condition, alkaline condition, uh, like in the winter when in ice the road uh, people put uh, salt for avoid uh, congelation. Uh, avoid ice so the, uh, the salt make an, an alkali solution and the alkali silica reaction um, absorb water and uh, soften the silica because the concrete contain quartz because sand is made of quartz uh, the reaction uh, of uh, uh, dissolving silica uh, provoke uh, this pattern of fracturation that is called concrete cancer and is very dangerous for road and bridge and uh, I think that this kind of fracturing and also the chemical process is quite similar to, to the formation of Brecciate Jasper so the dissolution in Jasper we just see in few phenomena in few materials for example in Tanderex we see that there was too much void space um, for be just a responsibility only of the fracture uh, only of the loss of volume and we see that the complete uh, dissolution of the jasper is responsible for the formation of the void where coconut ge geodes are, are formed so in this case the jasper are completely dissolved and new quartz are crystallized we see also in orbit chemi in chemical jasper then when the, the fracture by load are if an open space is probably caused by dissolution and we see this brecciate jasper that are um, made of chemical jasper or, or of silicified wood and also of abyssal jasper so this phenomenon is not so rare uh, <coughs> some material are quite strange this is for example what remain of a silicified fossil wood and this from master range is called um, a kind of wood replacement because it's possible to recognize the, sa the shape of the, the cavity that is a, a shape uh, of, of a branch and of a wood but what is inside is a mix of piece of jasper piece of moss uh, vein of agate uh, there is a free surface so all is uh, uh, mixed mingling and there is it's quite difficult to understand what happened but there is no remain of the original 
original ring of the jasper, of the wood. This is another piece from the same deposit. We see that some material is a kind of jasper gate with some fracture. There is uh, a deposition process uh, that makes some kind of stratification, but the clust of the original jasper have not mm, remained of the ring. This is an another deposit uh, from Mohair Jasper, and this is uh, a nice stratified jasper, but in some cases can be completely brecheted. Also, this Belvede, Belvade Jasper have a stratification of a mix of jasper, moss, agate, agate, chalcedony, and in many pieces we can see there is some fracturing of lamina with moss uh, aspect. And uh, maybe, but we don't know for sure, uh, some uh, strange material like confetti agate uh, can be the result of a very tiny fragmentation process of a, a jasper bed and uh, because the structure is quite unusual for, for an agate and this more possible is a brichet jasper and another material from Madagascar mm, that is also called, uh, called confetti agate uh, a, a, a tiny structure that can be the result of a process of alteration of a jasper so this is uh, probably the the story of the end of the jasper that transform into chalcedony and into other material of different aspects.